All right, so now that we've got the basic attributes and tags down for frames, and we know those vocabulary terms, we're going to dive in and actually start coding them. So your learning targets for this particular lesson are that you can describe the attributes of the frame set tags as well as the frame tags and that you can write code to create frames for displaying web pages with headings, menus, and other content. Now, we are going to be creating this Bill Thomas Illustrations web page. So you'll remember we talked about, you know, having this header up here, and then we have this part down here that acts as a menu bar, and then our main frame here. And this main frame here will actually be what is changing as we click on our menu bar. So. What I need you to do to start is to open up Notepad++ and to create a new project. So we'll do File, New, and then we'll Save As. Now something to note is if I go into my H drive here, now I have it in my HTML folder under Unit 5, and then I have In Class Unit 5. And what you're going to notice is I've already downloaded all of the different resources that are on my classroom website. So at some point soon, you will have to go to my classroom website and download all of these images, plus this order form HTML file at the very, very bottom. So you'll need to download all of those, which are what I currently have in here. And I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to name that file frame definition HTML. So this is going to be my frame definition file that I create that actually defines how I'm breaking my window up into different frames. And then I'm going to save it, and there we go. So then from here, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to type in the basic skeleton code. Now, something to note is I do not have a body tag in here, and I will talk about that in just a second. But what you need to start is you need your doc type tag, just like you normally have. You then need your HTML tags, open and close. And then you need your header tags nested inside of there. And then inside of your header tags, you'll have your title, which is Bill Thomas Illustrations. And now note, again, I am not putting in body tags. I'm going to explain that in just a second. So get that skeleton in there without body tags, and then you can unpause the video and move on. Now from here, and this is where you want to go back into your notes because your notes packet will actually tie in here, I want you to note that there are no body tags in a frame definition file. That's because we are actually breaking apart the body of that web browser window. So we aren't going to have body tags. We're going to use what are called frame set tags instead. So if there are frame set tags contained within this file, you cannot have body tags. They are what are called mutually exclusive and as a result, body tags and frame set tags cannot exist within the same file. So a couple of things we need to remind ourselves of. First, and again, this is going to tie in with your notes as well, the frame set attributes of columns and rows are how we actually break apart our browser window. If we use columns, that indicates the number of columns that we want to break into. And here you'll notice there's two different ways to actually tell the browser how you want it to break it up. One is to use a relative width, which is based on percentages. So this is saying take up 25% of the browser and 75% of the browser. Now you can also do this with pixels by not including the percentage sign. So this is saying make column one 150 pixels and column two 300 pixels. And this is absolute width because we're giving an absolute number of pixels to be where this is relative depending on the size of the window. Now, similarly, our rows indicate the number of rows we want to kind of break that browser window up into. And just like columns, that you can have a relative height, which is going to be using a percentage, saying take up 20% of the vertical height of that browser window or 80%. And then same thing with absolute. This would be 125 pixels tall and 425 pixels tall. So then to kind of branch off from there is we want to really make sure we understand relative versus absolute. So I want you to add this into your notes as well. Relative measures use percentages, which means it's proportional to the window. So that's where we have 25% or 75%. So if you use those inside of your rows and columns attribute, when you're using your frame set tags, it's going to map it out depending on the size of your window. Whereas if you use absolute measures, you use pixels. 
and that means the size of the frame is fixed. It doesn't resize when the browser is resized. It stays exactly 125 pixels or whatever you assign it to be. So be careful if you want to use that relative width, make sure you include the percentage sign afterwards. Now, something, something I haven't talked about is we actually have a third option when it comes to these columns and rows, and we can use something called an asterisk or called wildcards. And what we can actually do is you can just put in asterisks and what it will do is it will just determine how much space is needed for that frame given the number of columns and rows that you have. So for example here, if you had a frame set columns and you had star, 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 asterisk, 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 what this would do is create three equal columns. So if you don't wanna actually specify your percentage and you, or you want them all to be the same size, you can do asterisk, 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 wherever you want columns and rows to be of the same size. And same thing here, we're saying we want the middle part to be 25% of the browser, but the rest of these rows are all going to be split evenly. So notice that we have three options with getting the size of our frames down. So now that we've kind of jumped into that, we're going to recall what we're trying to actually program. So we're trying to create this particular frame on the screen. So recall that we have three frames. We basically take our entire window, we break it up into two different columns, and then we take column one and we break it up into two rows. So we're going to have a frame set tag to break it up into the columns, and then another frame set tag to break it up into the rows there. So the first thing we wanna kinda of note is we wanna create two column frame sets. So we want to take our frame set tag and we're going to do that right now. We're actually going to start coding it. We're going to put in a frame set tag. And I know that the first break I want to happen on the screen is I want to break it up into two columns. So I'm going to have a column that takes up 25% of the browser and a column that takes up 75% of the browser. And then I'm going to close this off. Now, if you need to make yourself notes, remember that this breaks it up into two columns. So between these two tags, this opening and closing tag, I will have two columns of information. So then my next step here, after I've broken it up into two columns, is I'm going to start coding column one. And I know that column one is broken up into two rows. So I'm going to say, okay, frame set, I'm going to open and close it. This is taking up row sorry, column one, and it's breaking it up into two rows. I'm going to have a row that's equal to 20% of the browser height, and then I want one that's equal to 80% of the browser height. Notice that I'm using the 80% and I'm putting them inside of quotations. Now here, because I have two numbers, that is dictating I want two columns. Same here, I have two numbers. I'm breaking it apart into two rows. Now from here, I want to include my different frames. So here I have a frame, and I'm just going to leave it blank for right now because I don't know much about it. So that's column one, row one, and then column one, row two. So I have a frame tag in there for each of them. And then here, this is all column one. So then I have a frame tag here for column two. So I'm going to expand and add more into these frame tags. I just haven't specified their specifications yet, so I'm not going to add those attributes in just yet. So keep in mind, we're going to have a header page in this first one. This is column one, row one. We're going to have a menu page in the second one, so that's column one, row two. And then down here is going to be our main home page. That's column two, and that's all of common two. We're not breaking that one up, so we do not have a frame set tag. So just to kind of recap, we have two frame set tag sets one for each break, the break into columns, and then the break into rows. And then we have a frame tag accordingly for each of the three frames that will be displayed on our screen. So right here, this frame tag corresponds with this Bill Thomas illustrations. This frame tag corresponds with our menu bar here. And this frame tag corresponds with our main content page here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start breaking apart exactly what each of these frames needs to have. So something I know about this first frame is that it's in the top left corner. I can see that up here. And what I know about that frame is that it contains the logo page, which we have yet to create. And then it contains a little bit more information. So my time is about to expire. So I'm going to continue this on the next video. And we're going to start programming these three frame tags together.